All right, Proverbs, uh, in the book of Proverbs, we've been studying the subject of poverty and wealth, which is a huge subject in, in the book. Um, we've, we've studied a couple other subjects, uh, parents and children and, and uh, that, but, but poverty and wealth is a big one. <clears throat> and so here's sort of a summary statement of the, of the Proverbs we've looked at so far. We've looked at Proverbs that talked about the value of wisdom. Wisdom is supremely valuable. It's more valuable than, than money. It is the most valuable thing, right? Wisdom, of course, meaning the, the, the ability of one to live in a manner that pleases God. That's what wisdom is. It's, it's righteousness. It's knowing the, the, the thing that God wants you to choose in this situation. That's wisdom. It's taking the, the things that God has declared about his character and about what he what he desires, and saying, okay, then what does God, what, what pleases God with this choice, or with that choice, or with this other decision? So wisdom is more valuable than money. Uh, we saw that a host of uh, Proverbs about that. We saw a few examples of why wisdom is greater. We saw, we talked about how God has orchestrated the world in such a way so that a wise person who's following his precepts just naturally is set up in a place where they probably, on the whole, will generally be more financially successful than, than someone who does not. Um, and the whole point of that is to show us that riches really are in, in the hand of God. And we saw several Proverbs that talk about this, that really it's God who controls riches, and whoever is rich or poor is ultimately decided by our sovereign God. Now, because of that then, wisdom's more valuable, wisdom leads towards a, a, a better opportunities in financial world, but God's in control of it. So then we looked at a, a, a few verses that really speak about that verse, speak about that theme that we find in First Timothy chapter six, which is um, the love of money is the root of all evil. So our focus should not be on money; it shouldn't be on the riches. So we talked about verses like Proverbs twenty three: "Labor not to be rich; cease from thine own wisdom." Like that's not the purpose that you're laboring. You're not doing it all for money. Then we talked about the, um, the passages in Proverbs that deal with uh, a rich man. And there are several that talk about it as a very positive thing. To be rich is a good thing. You know, you're, it can be a strong tower for you. It can be walls in your defense. It's a, hey, it's wise to have riches and to have, have uh, financial means. That's a great thing. But then, at the same token, it takes... Uh, riches and talks about the rich man and says, here's the foolish rich man, and he's the one who trusts in his riches, whose focus is on the riches and not on the Lord. And so now we're moving from there on to the poor man, and we're going to look at several verses dealing with the poor man. Let's talk about the wise poor man first, and we'll do that starting in verse uh, chapter 15, Proverbs 15 and verse 16. <clears throat> We'll see a lot of verses that are very similar to this, that start off with the word better. Here's what it says in Proverbs 15, verse 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. So when we're looking at it, we, we could break it down, right? Better is, take those words out, and then you'll see the two, the two scenarios. Little, meaning having only a little, but you have the fear of the Lord. You have little possessions, but you fear the Lord. And then the other scenario is, after the word than, great treasure and trouble. Which one's better between those two scenarios? Great treasure and trouble, or very little treasure, but the fear of the Lord? Yeah, I'll take the little treasure and fear of the Lord. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, rather than the great treasure with all the trouble that comes with it. Um, and and if, if, if I'm fearing the Lord and the Lord has for me great treasure, fine, I'll take it. But I'm not going to abandon the fear of the Lord for treasure. And there's wisdom in a poor man who's poor because, that's what the, because he's fearing the Lord. He's choosing the little because it means fear of the Lord for him. That's not the case in everyone's circumstance, but it's certainly the better choice. Uh, Proverbs 18, Proverbs 18, verse 23. 
Oh, this one's interesting. This one took me a bit as I was thinking through this one. Um, the poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. Define entreaties for me. I, I looked this up a while back, and I can't remember what the... So, an entreaty, like um, you're asking nicely, please, or not necessarily nicely, like begging. Please, please, I'm entreating you. Please give me this. Right? The poor uses entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. The verse seems to have, whenever you're reading a proverb, you kind of pick up when it's using a negative and a positive. Here, the negative seems to be the, the rich, right? The rich answers roughly. That, that, that sounds like a negative, right? And the poor using entreaties is the positive then. There's the, there's the good one, right? Yes? <clears throat> Yes. Yeah, I think so. One is humble. One recognizes their lowliness and is saying, please, I need this. The other one says, I don't need anything from you, and it answers roughly, right? Yes? So one is polite and the other one is not. Yeah, I think that's probably, I, yeah, I, th I would say that's probably bound up in that, the politeness. There's going to be a, I want to honor and be polite to you because I need something, where the other one... He's so filled with himself, I don't, I don't need to be polite to you. What do I need to be polite for, you know? It's sort of like, it's sort of like uh, when a politician f knows they can't get voted out of all office. What do they call that? The lame duck or whatever when they're, you know, they, they're not going to, they're never, they don't need your vote anymore. And suddenly they change, right? <laughs> they don't need you. <laughs> they don't need to be polite anymore. They don't care. Um, that, that happens from time to time, right? <clears throat> um. Yeah, so I think when we're when we're the, the handful of verses that we're that we're going through right now, when it talks about poor and, and rich, it's is dealing in a very um, very physical way, right? Because this poor person is wise, which means spiritually he's rather rich, right? Because he's got some wisdom. And in this case, it's not even saying that this poor person is a wise poor person or this rich person is a is a fool. It's just saying this is what naturally comes. Here's a benefit to those who are poor, at least they're going to use entreaties when they need something. A rich person just orders people around. You know, a rich person gets, is filled with themselves and filled with selfishness. And so it's, it, th this, pro this is the thing about the Proverbs. They're making points that are very deep, um, but not all of them are, go do this. It's just like, notice this. Do you see that when God makes somebody poor, sometimes it's just to... to to adjust their attitude, <laughs> right? yeah. to humble them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to bring humility. Let's do the next one, and then I'm, I'm sure you have uh, other, other comments as well. Uh, Proverbs 19. <clears throat> There's two in this chapter, so I'll, give, I'll read both of them to you, and then we'll, um, then we'll talk about them. Here's another one of those better ones. Verse 1. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. And then verse 22. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. That's deep. You can still have integrity and be poor, whether spiritually or physically? Yeah, so um, verse 1, you have another one of those better is than. So you, you can take those three words out, and you've got the two scenarios. The first scenario, the poor, who's walking in his integrity, which means... He doesn't have very much. He doesn't have a lot of possessions, but he's walking in, a, in integrity. He's doing what is right. He's, he's wise, right? He's doing the wise thing. So very little, but you have wisdom. You're walking in integrity, following, following the path of the Lord. And then the other scenario is he that is perverse in his lips, meaning he's not using integrity. He is lying, and, and he is a fool, right? So... It doesn't matter how much wealth he has. He could be poor, he could be rich, it could be whatever. But the poor who's wise is better than the other guy, no matter how much money he's got. He could have all the world or nothing. Um, that scenario is always better on the, on the first. The former is better than the latter. So I'm foolish if I only right. have like perverse lips. Perverse. Yeah, so um, I, think, I think what we're talking about here is, is a lot of... Um, um, a lifestyle, like you've chosen to, to like that's how you are, that's how you're known. 
But I think it, you can still apply it to individual choices and say, man, that was a foolish choice. I'm going to try not to make that a habit. <laughs> I'm not going to make that into a lifestyle. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. yeah. And, and then verse 22, the desire of a man is his kindness. Now, that's, a, that's an interesting way to put it. I think, I think what's being said here is that the, the, the thing that is desirable about a man is his kindness. The, peop, the reason that people you know, are drawn to a person is that they're kind. And then it says, a poor man is better. There's another one of those better phrases. Here's a poor man, here's a liar. Which one do you want? The poor man, why? Well, he's probably going to be kind to me. The liar, I know what he's going to be. I mean, I don't even care if he's rich or poor. It doesn't really matter. He's a liar. Um, not a lawyer, but those fit in that category too. <laughs> um but the, uh, the poor man, at least I know he's going he's gonna to be kind. And at least he's going to come to me with entreaties, you know. And so there's, there's that wisdom bound up even in poverty. Let's, let's move on so we don't take up uh, too much time without finishing at least one section. Uh, Proverbs 27, <clears throat> verse 7. The full soul. Loatheth, loatheth, excuse me, <laughs> that King James language, right? The full soul loatheth and honeycomb, but to the hun hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. That's very picturesque. I think we can all identify with that. It's kind of like, I mean, you, you, we've all been there. You're, sh you're like really hungry. You haven't eaten all day for whatever reason, and it doesn't really matter what's on the menu. I will eat it. It's going to be amazing. It's going to taste so good. I'm convinced. I don't know this. But I'm convinced that's why restaurants make you wait so long to eat so that you'll like it more when you finally get to eat <laughs> that tastes better. <laughs> but uh, to the hungry, every bitter thing is sweet. Yes. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So I. So in this in this case, the direct, um, obvious application is the physical, uh, the obvious one. And that's because the word soul just means, can refer to various different aspects of the invisible part of a man. So if he wants something, that's part of his soul. He desires something, it's part of his soul. So he desires a honeycomb. So it's the, it's the full soul. He doesn't even desire the honeycomb. He's like, oh, I can't take anymore. Uh, but the hungry uh, every bitter thing is sweet. And so it, it applies very practically, you know, like, um, you know, Alyssa and I, if we, if we go on vacation, we do an Airbnb. We just think, this is an amazing house. Look at how beautiful everything is. But, you know, people who live in a house like that all the time, it's like, right. you know, it's just a house. I want a better one, you know. You know Airbnb at yeah. <laughs> 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 no, we usually think, oh, we used to think it's amazing, even though it's really not that great. Um, What's that? But, I just ran across the floor. <laughs> you know, you, you rent a car, then you gotta you gotta get that car because that's right. just so nice. But someone who owns the car is just like, ah, I don't like this car anymore, you know. Um, so there's that very practical. But I think you're getting a great point, Melody, because it certainly has that spiritual application too. The one who says, I've got it, I've got all the answers, I don't need any more. The, the one who says that they have all the answers. They don't feel like they need anything else. And it kind of goes hand in hand w with what we were talking about this morning. Um, the person who sees themselves as poor, who needs more, they, they're hungry, right? Absolutely. That's, that's deep. In that vein, it, it just, it, you could kind of ponder on, and all of this is, this is kind of the truth about all of these Proverbs, but you kind of ponder on it all day and, and just follow it. Because, you know, there's people who, who are hungry to be fed and, and to understand the Word of God, but they're in a place where uh, really they're not getting a lot of that, but they're getting a little bit of it. You know, they'll go to a church where at least they can get a little bit of God's Word, and the bitter thing, even the bitterest thing like that is still sweet to them because they're like, they need, they're hungry for it. But then somebody who, then somebody can go into a, a service where it's like the Word of God is preached and it's declared, and oh, I don't, I don't need this. You know, so you see that, like, man, if, if you could only see how much, how hungry you are, if you could just become hungry, you would see how, how wonderful this honeycomb is. Physical thing, you know, as far as trying to help us understand what we need to do. 
Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that because I think it's both. I wouldn't say that it's not the physical thing. I think the physical thing is, is there, but it's, it can't be limited to that. I think the Proverbs are meant on purpose to be broad so they can be both, you know. So I think it's, I think it's, it's declaring a, just a basic observation about physical, you know, reality. You know, somebody who's, who's full looks at something that's sweet and good and says, nah, I don't need that. And, and it, it's using that as, as a principle. So that applies to our, our study of the poor um, who are, should be working hard and trying to earn money and all that kind of stuff um, because they're hungry, right? It, it causes them to be, um, to be kind often. It causes them to use entreaties and it should be driving them to wisdom but the the rich often are are often lazy and are often have the worst character because they're full. But then it it launches us from there into that spiritual reality. And I think, of course, um, each each of these proverbs you can kind of see both in there, and one is maybe more intended than the other <laughs> uh, in some of them. I think this one's one where you can see both. I would say probably because of the general vague of the of the physical application I think you're right I think it's probably focused mainly on the spiritual application yeah uh, chapter 28 verse 6 <clears throat> better is the poor here's another of the betters better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways though he be rich well, that sounds like the same thing almost isn't it <clears throat> uh, it's kind of like a combination of, of Chapter 15, verse 16, and chapter 19, verse 1. Um, better is the poor. That, here's the poor. He's ro- walking in uprightness, and that's better than he that is perverse in his ways. Now it's not perverse in his lips, but in the things that he's doing, even if he is rich, right? Uh, before it was, better is the poor that walketh in his, in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Now it's saying that's the same thing. Perverse in lips and fool are really the same thing. So if you're perverse in your lips, and even if you're rich, um, it's, it's better. Uh, chapter 28, verse 11. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. So conceit, usually, his, in his own conceit, that's a phrase that usually just means um, in his own eyes. In his own esteem, he believes himself. He believes himself to be wise, right? Now we were talking. What was it? A couple weeks ago, about people who are, without using any names, who are very wealthy. Who just because of their wealth, they think they they know everything there is to know about vaccines or something because they because they have a lot of money, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we won't name names, but Bill Gates is one of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> So that's what I think. Uh, I think it's probably better to read it. He's wise in his own eyes. The rich man is wise in his own eyes. Meaning, he's not really wise. He is stupid, but he, he thinks he's wise. Yeah. So there's, there's the thing. You've got the rich man. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm smart. I'm wise because I'm rich. So I must be wise. The poor, uh, the poor man, not every poor man, the poor man that has understanding. So there we go. There's that. Not all poor people are being commended here, right? There's a lot who are poor because of their foolishness. But there are some smart people, and they don't have to be rich just because they're smart. There's some people who've got understanding who say, I can see right through you. I'm not fooled by your riches. The emperor has no clothes, <laughs> you know. Um, this is, uh, so they, they see through it. It's like, you're not fooling me, buddy, you know. Um, and I think, I think this is very practical. This is definitely heavy on the physical reality side. And, and obviously, there's a spiritual reality. There's people who believe themselves to be super spiritual. They see themselves as spiritual in their own eyes. But someone who recognizes their lowly estate looks at them and says, I can see right through that, you know. Um, but I don't think that's the emphasis. It's certainly applicable there. I think the emphasis here is a very um, physical uh, emphasis, right? There's, there's just this 
wisdom that can be found even in, in poverty. Um, you know, I, we, we all kind of can identify with this rich man, can't we? I mean, we all kind of think, think our, ourselves to be pretty wise, you know, wise in our own eyes. Man, that's just the default state, I think. At least I could say that's, if I'm not working hard at it, I'm going to just think I'm right about everything. Mm -hmm. Well, so we're going to actually see as we get a little further in, if we ever get there, uh, hopefully the Lord will come first because <laughs> it might be a long time. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, but we'll see. The, the, so here's what I have next on my list, just to give you an idea. Um, we talked about the wisdom in poverty. That's what that was today. Next time we want to talk about foolishness in poverty. And there's a whole lot more verses about that. And we'll get into laziness and slothful, all that kind of stuff that, that produces poverty. Um, but then there's going to be a whole group of Proverbs that talk about how needy the poor are and how they need, uh, that we, we should not be oppressing them, but rather, we, rather than we should be helping people who are genuinely poor. And in that, I think we'll talk up more about the definition, what the Bible means in Proverbs when it talks about poor. But I think, I think it's very difficult for us to grasp the concept of poor from a 1000 BC perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because this is Sol Solomon talking about poverty, and it is very different than poverty today. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I used to do a, um, do a little uh, Bible study at a mission down in, in Manchester, and uh, these people couldn't couldn't, you know, they, 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 they were just out of the halfway house and they were, you know, they were, you know, have it, they couldn't pay hardly any rent or anything, but they all had TVs, they all had cell phones, they all had, it's, there was a smell of marijuana in the air, you know, so, so they had, <laughs> it's very difficult to see anyone or most anyone in, uh, in America as genuinely poor by the standards of the Bible. E even, even the poor have so many programs and things they can, it's, it's, it's very difficult to equate the two. Um, there are, are some equations, there's, there's some things that we'll get into, but yeah, the definition of poverty I think is very important and needs more careful thinking. But I think essentially when we're looking at this, a lot of it is genuine. I think we could summar summarize it as genuine need genuine need not right you know, can't pay the rent something like that there's there's a genuine need you know um so i think there's there's people who there's people who stop here at the church because i live behind the church and ask for money uh, on a semi-regular basis probably six every six months or so i get somebody stopping um telling me they can't buy gas and uh wanted to see if i have I don't know. I guess I look wealthy because I live behind a church. I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you think, it's like, I have four kids running around. You think I have extra money? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll give them five bucks for gas. I'm not going to give them enough to buy drugs or something. But I think there's, there's genuine need and then there's perceived need. And I think those are very different things. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we got through a few of the verses I have left. <laughs> uh, we'll go a little further next week. Father, or actually, no, we won't, uh, not next week or the week after that. So the next time we come for, for this will be three weeks because we've got communion next week and the week after that is, is Easter. So it'll be in April the next time we get back to this. Father in heaven, we are, um, we are learning. We, we love the depth of wisdom that you present to us in such uh, short pieces here in this in these proverbs but the the depth of the of the words that you can you can give us one sentence and it can send us make us dizzy for hours trying to understand the wisdom that contained in it it's just it's magnificent it's marvelous we thank you for it and we pray that you'd help us to follow it better and we pray these things in Jesus name